Hi, welcome guys. So uh, this video uh, I want to talk about is uh Kuputa right Fibonacci's identity. Okay, so uh, my video you uh, usually do like uh, physics or mathematics from high school to college to graduate school or to whatever. Okay. So if you are interested, uh, you can subscribe to my channel. And I promise that there will be very interesting, uh, a lot of theory and a lot of interesting maths and you do not see online. Okay, or seldom see people to prove it. And I also provide all the details uh, you need to know. Okay, so, oh, not the proof. Okay, so the idea is that let's quickly uh, see the identity. Uh, so one idea in the, in the, in the uh, complex analysis or something like the high school that uh, you will learn this uh, this kind of identity okay so this identity uh so you, if, if this is the first time you you see this identity that uh, people sometimes say that oh, abcd can be a real number okay so the proof proof of this identity is really simple that uh, you just you just expand it right so if you can just expand it this it become this right and uh, the cross term will cancel because the cross term is both a c b d times two right so okay so this is called a, a defending identity okay so you also tell you that uh, if any integer can be written as a sum of square then the uh, so is their product so idea uh, the example let's say uh, this guy right so Let's say uh, 1 plus 4 square, 2 plus 7 square, that you will get 26 plus 15 square, or the 20 square plus 1 square. Right, so basically the sum of the, if the two integers, two prime numbers, is it prime? Uh, yeah, so two so sum of the prime, if the sum of the prime numbers is the, each of one is the, uh, can be written as the sum of two integers, then the, so is their product. Okay. But, but uh, this guy, right? So this smart guy, right? This smart guy find another uh, more general identity. So in this video, I just want to talk about this. Okay, so more general identity actually is a a plus a square plus a b square plus c square plus n d square. Okay, so this is more general than the original one. That can be easily proved. Uh, a c minus uh, n b d square plus uh, a d plus b c square times n. Also, it's the AC plus NBD square equals to a uh, plus NAD minus BC square. Okay, so this is more general from uh, which is uh, more interesting. Okay, so this idea, uh, at least theorem, uh, works for any like the commutative ring, right? So because in a commutative ring, you can define uh, products and you can also define a uh, uh, plus or minus and uh, you also define the things you can define product so you can define square okay so this is the and the proof is just easy so i don't want i don't have to prove it but just uh direct it uh, square it okay so suppose we know this guy uh these two identity right so so this is the generalization of it right by taking one equals to one okay so that's Let's talk about the uh, application. So one of the application uh, I want to prove is uh, it's a standard multiplication of complex number, right? So if, if somebody take uh, to one complex number called a plus b i, which a b i integer, or non integers or a b i real numbers, then uh, none of it's defined to be a uh, square root of a plus b square, right? And the c plus d i is also c square plus d square. So let's call this this guy z1. Let's call it z2. So our property of known is that z1 times z2 is known of z1 product known of z2. And this is indeed the original defending identity. Or basically this guy's identity from taking n equals one. Okay. Okay, and uh, uh, but this is the like the simple application, right? The next application I want to talk about is the Pell's equation. Right, so this is the more general, uh, more interesting uh, uh, application. Okay, so that's so Pell's equation that is that you take a uh, a is an integer uh, which is a uh, uh, square free. 
So basically, a, a, a cannot be 4 or something, right? A, a cannot be 4 and 9, so a is not a totally square number. And the x squared minus a squared y equals 0 is called the Pell's equation. By the way, Pell's equation has some relationship to the quantum algorithm, which is uh, very difficult. Okay, if I have time, I can talk about it. So, right, so the to find the, right, if a is very large, to find a such x, y will be very difficult, right? So this equation is... Uh, also interesting. Okay, so I right, so from this identity, right? From this this guy's identity, that the what we have the identity is that uh, x one a y one square has x two minus a y two square. So if you you see this, right? I mean, I mean, I can take n to be minus one, right? So we got x one minus a y. Uh, sorry, I can take n to be minus a. Okay, so I will get x1 plus x2 plus a y1 y2 right because n is net minus a so let's take the first one right and then we plus square minus a x1 y2 plus x2 y1 square right from here okay so this this tell you that uh, this tell you guys that uh, if somebody have the two solutions of pal right then it can generate uh generate a three And the more general, if you can take x2 and y2 to be just the same as x1 and y1, then you can generate infinite solution. So it tells you that one Pell's one solution of Pell's equation can generate infinite of solutions, infinite solutions. Right, you can just take a square square. Uh, uh, I think it's correct. Right, so that's so that means you can take a triple. Uh, you can take a two to generate three. Okay. Okay, I think uh, that's it, and I will see you guys. I think that's enough for uh, this interesting uh, polynomial. Next time, I will see you guys. I will see you guys in the next videos. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.